Hello friends, welcome back. Today we will be uh, uh, taking a few questions from matrices and determinants. Obviously since both of them are intertwined, uh, uh, both of these concepts will be used together. Okay. So the first one, without expanding show that the determinant, uh, this determinant is actually equal to zero. Okay. Now <coughs> without expanding is uh, because uh, to make you familiar with the uh, with those elementary operations, right? Uh, the, all these row operations or column operations, we can uh, we can we can do, right? So let's get on with that. Now, as you can see, the third column here uh, has two terms, right? In each of them, a square minus b c, b square minus uh, c a, c square minus a b, right? Now uh, we use one of those properties of determinants and. We expand this as two different determinants, right? So LHS is one. Okay, I'll write the columns first. One, 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 A, B, C, and then I write the similar terms here, right? A square, B square, C square, and then this is again the first two rows remain the same, and we have now B, C. So remember that I have taken minus and common. I can do that, right? Uh, this is minus uh, common for all of them. So I can just take that uh, common for the whole determinant. So <coughs> this is my same original determinant expressed in a different way. So I keep the first one as it is. Now what I do is I uh, I try to multiply the first uh, first row with a, right? Now, if I multiply the first row with a, I need I need to divide the whole determinant by a too, right? Because multiplying uh, the whole row or the whole column with a fixed number uh, increases the uh, the determinant value by the same factor. So we need to divide it by the same number to to uh, keep the same value, right? So I divide by a and I multiply this as. Uh, this with a, right? Similarly, I do the same thing for the second row, but this time I multiply with b, right? So I can again divide. I have to again divide by b. Same thing for the third one, right? So again, so what I did here is nothing but multiplying the first one, first row by a, and hence I have to divide the whole thing by a. The second one by B and the third one by C. Remember that, that this operation is illegal if you don't divide it outside by A, uh, right? Uh, all these three operations, so A, B, and C need to be divided by, otherwise, you change the value of the determinant. Right? Now, once I have done this, <coughs> look at the third column. The third column in the second determinant has A, B, C common, right? So, I can take the whole thing common and uh, that has that the factor of the determinant. This is right. So I take ABC common here, and what I am, uh, what is remaining is right. So ABC, uh, this comes from the this ABC comes from the uh, from the third column that divides with the factor we already had, which was one by ABC. So that just cancels everything. Now we have this one. Now if you look at the first determinant, you have almost the same thing, but the uh, the columns are not in the same order, right? So what we do is we now interchange them. Uh, so I need to bring uh, the one on one to the first column, right? So third column to the first column, and that actually changes my sign with a minus, right? And at the same time, so uh, the ABC actually goes to the third column now. Oh, sorry. Now this is actually written as this operation. R1 interchanging with R3. Right? If, you, if you look uh, in the previous one, R1 was getting changed to, see, R1 was getting changed to AR1. But here R1 and R3 are interchanging, so this is written as this side. So we have already two minuses here. In the next one, what I do is
I now interchange the second and third columns, and so I get another minus. No, sir. Right? The second and third columns also interchange. And this is nothing but minus minus is plus. Right? This can be written as R two getting interchanged with R three. And now, if you look at it, it's just the same determinant subtracting it itself from. Uh, it's all from the same determinant, right? So this is nothing but zero. Right. So we just use uh, some of the basic properties of determinants here uh, and uh, prove that without expanding, right? With expanding it definitely would have been a uh, bit painful. So without doing uh, all that expansion, we can just using the, these elementary operations so that it is actually zero. The second one. If f of theta is cos theta minus sin theta theta sin theta cos theta zero 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 one, uh, we'll show that f of alpha and f of beta is equal to f of alpha plus beta. Right. So we see that there is some hint of trigonometry here. So obviously we need to uh, be updated with our uh, with our uh, important trigonometry formula. But first of all, let us try to find out what the LHS is. Right. So f of alpha and f of beta is Cos alpha minus sin alpha zero, sin alpha cos alpha zero, zero zero one multiplied with cos beta minus sin beta zero, sin beta cos beta zero 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 one. Right. So let us just expand everything. So we have cos alpha, cos beta, minus sin alpha, sin beta plus zero. The second is minus cos alpha, sin beta, minus sin alpha, oh sorry, cos beta. Right? Third is zero zero uh, zero, right? Now we have sine alpha cos beta plus cos alpha sine beta, and finally minus sine alpha sine beta plus cos alpha cos beta. The next one again is zero. So are these two? Uh, these are easy to see. So this is uh, our product of these these two determinants. Now if you look at this uh, the The a one on a one two a two one a two two these four terms now these can be easily uh, expressed in terms of our uh, uh, addition formula right the first one is nothing but cos of alpha plus beta right there is a minus sign here so this is nothing but cos of alpha plus beta similarly the second is minus of if you take the minus sign common you have sine of alpha plus beta so is the third one sine of alpha plus beta but here is the positive sign and the final one again is uh, cos of alpha plus beta right. Cos of alpha plus beta minus sine of alpha plus beta zero. Sine of alpha plus beta. Cos of alpha plus beta zero 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 one. Right. Now, if you look at the uh, given given form of f of theta, so we can easily see this is nothing but f of alpha plus beta. Right. Uh, it is and hence we go. So, uh, so we can easily get to the second step, right? But uh, going to the next step requires uh, trigonometry. Hence, you should know the, the trigonometry formula as well. Right. Uh, third one: If p of x, q of x, r of x are uh, three polynomials of degree two, then prove that p of x, q of x, r of x, p dash of x, q dash of x, r dash of x, p double dash of x, q double dash of x, r double dash of x is independent of x. Right. Now uh, we will try to solve this in a slightly different way. Uh, uh, independent of x. Now, um, if, if you uh, if you know calculus, obviously this question cannot be done without the knowledge of calculus. So uh, these are nothing but the, the second rows, uh, second and third rows are nothing but the derivatives, right? So uh, what uh, what we will do is we will try to uh, differentiate this. Uh, uh, we will try to differentiate this determinant. And if the determinant turns out uh, 
to be something which is a constant number, right? Then that means it's independent of x. Uh, uh, if it turns out to be constant number, <coughs> so sorry, if it turns out to be zero, then we can say that uh, our determinant was actually independent of x, right? Because if it's independent of x, uh, that means it's a constant number, and derivative of a constant number is zero. Right? So we we'll, we will we'll try to use that concept here. So let us try uh, to look at the the derivative of this of this uh, determinant. So suppose delta is instead I, I'll just drop the of x thing. Uh, it's understood that p q actually stand for the uh, the functions here. Right, so you can just uh, drop the uh, of x of x every time. Remember here that p q are are functions and not numbers. Right, just remember this. Now let us write delta dash of x. Now, if, if you remember, delta dash of x is nothing but you uh, keep dividing each row uh, at one time or each column at a time. Right, so instead of uh, the uh, column here, I'll go with the row method because you can see that p q and x, p q and r are in, in a column, right? So you can you can find some kind of uh, pattern there. So first row, if I divide, I have p dash, q dash, r dash, and the second, uh, the third rows are just the, uh, the same ones. Now I differentiate the second one. So p q r p double dash q double dash r double dash. Now while differentiating the third one, remember that the question has stated, uh, stated p q and r to be polynomials of degree two, right? So uh, the maximum, uh, so, so the power of x there, the maximum power of x is just two. Now once you di differentiate a polynomial of degree two, what you get is nothing but a constant number. Right, unless uh, it's zero, so you you get either a constant number or zero. Now, <coughs> if I if I try if I try to differentiate it further, what I will get is obviously zero. Differ derivative of zero is zero. Derivative of a constant number is also zero. So once I divide the third row here, because the third row has just three constant numbers, so these are nothing but zeros, right? Now, if you look at the first here, uh, first determinant here, you see that the first row and the second row are exactly same, and hence the determinant is zero. In the second one, the second and third rows are exactly same, so that is also zero. And in the third one, the third uh, row is uh, complete with the elements of uh, elements. Uh, the elements are just zero, right? So if you just try expanding it, you see that the determinant is still zero. So that two is again zero, and hence we see that delta dash of x is zero. Now, if delta dash of x is zero, delta of x is some constant number c, right? I can just write it as some constant number c. Or in other words. Delta of x is actually independent of x. So actually, it's not it's not delta of x. It's just a constant number, right? So, so it's in, it's independent of x. Okay. Now the fourth one, without expanding, show that this determinant is actually a x plus b, where a and b are determinants of order three, not involving x. Okay. So for this one. <coughs> right now here uh, we will we will have to use a lot of uh, transformations and uh, these can be both row or column transformations so uh, look how uh, we will try to solve this one now delta is actually this thing right
right now <coughs> uh, the first operation i do is i write r1 as r1 plus r3 minus r2 remember that if you make any change to r1 here while this while doing any such transformation then uh, the change, the determinant's value will change so you'll have to further change it accordingly so that the determinant does not change right so that is why r1 always remains the same thing whereas you can add and subtract uh, add or subtract any multiple of any other row right so delta now is uh, r1 plus r3 minus r2 right so uh, x square plus x square minus 2x square makes it zero now x plus 2x minus 3x again zero and finally uh, you have 3 minus or minus 1 so 4 okay similarly for the next one x plus 2x that is 3x minus 3x zero 1 minus 1 uh, minus 1 that is zero minus nothing so it's zero here and again finally x plus 2x 3x minus 3x zero minus 2 minus 1 is minus 3 minus 1 minus 3 is zero right right now at this point if you look at the first row you just have 4 0 0 right so there are since there are two zeros that's like that's the easiest way to uh, go about this question right you can uh, simply expand it but instead of doing that and moreover since it's asked in the question not to expand uh, we'll also try to see uh, how this elementary row transformations work so we will just stick with uh, stick with this now <coughs> if you look at uh, these two uh So I'll just I'll just uh, change the first element here instead of zero plus zero plus four I'll just write that as four. Okay. So the next transformation I do is I subtract C three from C one, and at the same time I subtract C two uh, sorry uh, C three from C two. Right, so determinant is actually equal to now the first one. So four minus zero is four. Two x square plus three x minus one minus three. So three x cancels. Uh, minus one minus one minus three makes it plus two. So you have two x square plus two. Similarly. right uh sorry and c3 is as it is okay and then finally now because the the second row is very simple in a very simple form whereas the first one uh, has x square right so i try to somehow bring it here and i do the same thing with even the third row right first row is as it is the second one now so this is just two this does not change false oh, uh, sorry yeah this two does not change four Zero two x minus one. Now, if you look at the determinant, the first two columns have just no, uh, have just single terms, whereas the third uh, column has two terms, which are which are uh, <coughs> just uh, two polynomials uh, of degree one, right? Three x minus three, two x minus one. So we can now separate these two determinants, and what we have is four zero zero 
टू थ्री थ्री एक्स फोर जीरो टू एक्स राइट प्लस फोर जीरो जीरो टू थ्री माइनस थ्री एंड फोर जीरो माइनस वन Now look at the third column in the first term. Right, we can take x common, right? So we have four zero zero two three three four zero two plus four zero zero two three minus three four zero minus one, right? Now if you look at it, we have uh, now the these two determinants actually just give you. Two uh, real numbers, right? Or two constants here because they are uh, the all the elements are just constant numbers here. So we get it in, uh, in our desired form a x plus b, where a and b are two determinants not involving any part any components of x here, and uh, they are both of degree three, right? Now the next one. If delta r is r minus one, r minus one whole square, r minus one whole cube, n two n square three n cube, six four n minus two three n square minus three n, find the summation of delta r. Right now, <coughs> yeah, if you remember, uh, now here if you see uh, the first column actually consists of r, whereas something which is changing, right? Uh, the summation requires r to change, whereas the second and third third columns do not change at all. So whenever you sum them. All we need to do is to sum sum the first uh, the elements of the first column, right? So let's get on with that. What we're doing in here is okay. Uh, let's just so summation of delta r. It's the same thing as summation of R minus one summation of R minus one squared and summation of R minus one cube right now <coughs> we all know this uh, the the formula for summation of R minus one right uh, this is uh, all of these are from R the limits have been mentioned here on the left hand side. So R equal to one to n. Now that now since it is R minus one, well like you can do that in uh, two different ways. You can just take the summation of R, which is uh, n into n plus one by two minus of n, uh, which is come for minus one, or you can directly write it for uh, R minus one. It will be n minus one into n by two. Right? We just have to decrease the upper limit by one. Same thing here. N minus n into 2n minus 1 by 6, and finally n square into n minus 1 squared by 4. Okay, so this was uh, one of the critical parts here, writing the summation correctly. Now, if you look at the first column, you can take uh, n minus 1 into n by 2 common, right? They are in all the three, uh, all the three elements. So I take n uh, n minus one into n by two common. What I have is the first is just one, then two n minus one by six, and finally n into n minus one by two. The remaining terms are the same. So n two n square. T n cube, 4 n minus 2, T n square minus 3. Right. Now, if we look at the first column and the third column, well, uh, the first term is 6, and here it is 1, so 6 times. The next one also. Okay, uh, so sorry, this is 2 n minus 1 by 3, not 6. Right. If you multiply uh, the second uh, the second element of first uh, first column by six, what you have is nothing again four n minus two. Right. So we have already got the first two terms common. So let us now look at for the uh, look for the third term. So you have n squared minus n by two. Multiply that with six, and you have three n squared minus three. Right. So we we see that 
C3 is nothing but 6 times of C1. Right? So, once we know that uh, all the elements of a row is, uh, all the elements of a column here uh, are, uh, are, are multiples of the corresponding elements of, of some other column, we can directly write that the determinant is 0, right? Determinant of the, the determinant is 0. So, hence we find that the summation of delta r from r equal to 1 to n is actually 0. Right? Now, uh, now f of x has been defined here as secant x cos x secant squared x plus cot x cos secant x cos squared x cos squared x cos secant squared x 1 cos squared x cos squared x. Now, uh, now directly, now question is prove that the integral from 0 to pi by 2 is minus pi by 4 plus 8 by 15. Right. Now, uh, in such, uh, in this kind of determinant, we can directly uh, expand it, but expansion is a bit tough, so we will try to simplify it as much as possible. Now, it turns out that we cannot actually uh, simplify it much because there are so many, uh, uh, except except just this one, uh, which is the first element of uh, third row. So, <coughs> apart from that, since all our uh, elements of x here, it may not be exactly that easy to uh, simplify it. So, we will not try to oversimplify it, right? So, we will try to do as much as possible, but not more than that. Right. So, uh, I, I do this transformation. Why do I do that? Because there is one here. I multiply that with secant, sorry, secant of x. Uh, so, I, I, I hope there will be some kind of change, right? So, f of x is secant x minus secant x becomes 0. Cos x minus secant x into cos square x, right? So, that again is 0. The, uh, the final one is secant squared x plus cot x plus secant x. Cos squared x that becomes just cos x. So, that just subtracts here. You have cos squared x, cos squared x, so secant squared x, 1, cos, cos squared x, cos squared x, right. We now try to uh, determine uh, the determinant because we already see that there are two zeros in the first row, hence the expansion will not be a big thing. Right, so this is now equal to secant squared x plus cot x cos secant x minus cos x. Now, while doing this uh, expansion, uh, please bear in mind uh, that you have to take the proper signs, right? The signs we get uh, while taking the cofactors minus one power i plus j. Otherwise, you you will get the determinant wrong, right? So uh, please be very careful while uh, evaluating it. So this into cos power four x minus cos squared x, right? So I can take cos squared x common. And I have uh, cos, so cos squared, cos power four x minus cos squared x. So this is Okay, so cos squared x common from this, uh, then you have cos squared x minus 1, that can be written as minus sin squared x, right? So now I try to multiply the whole thing with this cos squared x sin squared x, what I get is secant squared x into cos squared x sin squared x, so cos squared secant x cancels and I have only sin squared x, and then cot x cos secant x can be written as cos x by sin square x. So, into the, into cos square x, sin square x. And finally, cos cube x, sin square x. So, I have sin square x 
Now I have cos cube x here and minus cos cube x sin square x. So I can take cos cube x common from that. What I have then is 1 minus sin square x which is nothing but cos square x again. So this is nothing but minus of sin square x plus cos power pi x. Right? So this is my function f of x. What I require is the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of f of x dx. Now what is that? Minus, I take minus common here. Right? Now so these are just the functions of sin, uh, these are of the form sin power mx uh, dx and uh, cos power nx dx. So and from 0 to pi by 2, right? So these are just standard integrals for both of which uh, we have uh, some standard formulae. So for the first one, we have half into pi by 2. For the next one, we have, so it starts with pi, right? So it decreases by 1. So uh, 4 into 2 by pi into 3 into 1, right? So uh, you can actually uh, integrate it completely and see that, yes, actually this formula works. I have directly written the formula here. So you have minus pi by 4 plus 8 by 15. Okay. And this is what is asked, right? <coughs> so the, uh, the, the integral actually is equal to minus pi by 4 plus 8 by 15. Okay. The seventh one, using elementary row transformations, find the inverse of the matrix A. Right. So here uh, we introduce a very uh, nice thing, uh, very nice uh, way to approach this kind of question. Okay. So what I do is I index, uh, I write a as i into a, right? Now why do I do that? Uh, this will become uh, this will become because uh, finding the inverse is not a very big uh, thing, right? You just have to find the adjoint of uh, a. And then, and the determinant of a, and just uh, hope that the determinant is not zero. So you can easily just uh, find the inverse of the matrix. But we'll try to do it in a different way, uh, just to uh, help you with these elementary row transformations. Right. So uh, the first one is now. Okay. Uh, this is okay. So I will just write this, uh, both of these first, see, minus 1, minus 2, 2, 0, minus 1, 3, minus 5, 0. So now this is equal to, now I, I intentionally do not write uh, A again, right? it becomes meaningless that way, so I will just write A here. Right? Uh, just to just to remind me, yes, that a does not uh, a is uh, a is written there for some different purpose, not for evaluating it. So the first one is R one changes as uh, R one minus R two. Right, so one minus one minus one. 2, 0, minus 1. Next. Now why do I do this step? Now, uh, the basic uh, reasoning behind this kind of procedure is once I written a is equal to i into a, uh, I'll try to bring a into the form of i, right, the identity matrix i, and because i is nothing but a inverse of a, so once I uh, do some kind of some uh, transformations such that I get it in some in this kind of form. So whatever matrix I have here, right, which was initially my inverse matrix here, so that will be my uh, my inverse A, right? So 
Uh, that is why I keep doing some kind of some uh, transformations to bring with the sole purpose of bringing uh, this matrix A uh, to, into this uh, inverse uh, into the identity matrix I. Right. So uh, because of that, <coughs> I in, I have the first step is always to make the first element as one, and now I see that this is one minus one minus one. So this becomes zero. Zero two. Minus two. So I have one here. And now at the same time, I do the third, uh, the second operation also. At one minus one zero. Don't forget to write the a here. Otherwise, it doesn't make any sense. The next one is so I I, I see that uh, I already have the first column as one zero zero right in identity matrix you have one zero 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 one zero so the next step I do is I I uh, make my uh, uh, the element a two two as one in right? the second row one I I try to bring it in that form so I just divide r two by two. And I have to take care that uh, uh, the, the zeros I have already obtained should not again become some numbers. Right? So that is something uh, that you have to take extreme care of while doing these transformations. Right. Now I have to bring uh, make this one minus one zero. So I just see that I can easily multiply uh, add the second row so that this becomes zero here. And similarly, the third one, right? So that again becomes zero. So I have uh, R two. This is zero here. This two R two. So this is minus five. Right. Uh, again, uh, now that I have obtained uh, the first two rows in the same in the correct form, I just uh, divide the third row by four. Now note that this kind of procedure cannot be done with determinants, but in this uh, in this uh, uh, in this uh, question, it's perfectly fine because we're dividing the whole, the left and the right hand sides both by four, right? Otherwise. Uh, what this means is you are determining you are dividing only one row, so the determinant actually should change, right? Or the or the matrix actually changes. But here, since we are just doing some transformations on both sides, it, it's the same thing.
Right? I just write it in the simplest form. Three by four. Uh, now the only thing left here is reducing these minus one by eight and one by eight somehow to zero. What I do is. Now, yeah, you may be tempted to just add uh, uh, the the second row to the first row, right? Uh, so that one by eight minus one by eight becomes zero. But note that that will actually increase the zero here to one, right? So be very careful while doing these kind of operations. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, oh yeah, this should be this should be just two here, right? I just uh, transform the third row, so they did not change. So uh, one zero zero. Now I, I also try to change the second row is similarly zero 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 one. And what I have in the in the final one I have is. Minus five by eight, five by four, right? Half plus three by four, that is one by eight, and then minus three by eight, three by four, minus one by eight, minus five by four. Ah, oh, sorry, eight, three by four. One, oh sorry, just a second. Oh, oh yes. I divide by four, right? So I have four here. So now you see that I have it in the form i is equal to a inverse of a, right? It has to be a inverse, right? This the this one has to be a inverse, otherwise <coughs> this formula is not held. So we see that our inverse is Right. This is my inverse. Okay. Moving to the next one. Solve the following system of equations by matrix method. X plus two y minus two z is equal to one. X minus y plus z is equal to zero. Two x plus three y minus four z is equal to two. Right. Now, uh, since it has been mentioned that we are supposed to do it by matrix method, so we'll just write what a is. A is the coefficient matrix. So it is one, one, minus two, one, minus one, zero, two, three, minus four. Right. So x is x, y, z, and I let b as one, zero, two. Right. Now once I know uh, a, let's quickly write a joint of a. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, For the first one, the cofactor of first one is four minus three uh, minus zero. That is four. Uh, remember that uh, that joint is actually uh, transpose of the cofactor matrix. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll initially write just the cofactor matrix, and then I'll transpose it. Minus four. So this is again four. P. Plus two, five. So, minus four plus minus four plus six. 
Right, uh, now we transpose this for five minus two zero minus one minus two minus two minus two. So this is my adjoint. Now, uh, now my determinant is nothing but right. I, I just I can uh, just multiply uh, any any row with the, co the corresponding cofactor uh, column here. So one one minus two into four four five. One into four plus one into four is five into minus two. This is 8 minus 10, which is minus 2. So now x is nothing but 1 by determinant a adjoint a into b, right? So this is 1 by minus 2, the adjoint matrix so 4 minus 2 minus 2 Right, uh, four zero minus two, five minus one minus two into one zero two. Right, this is minus one by two of four minus uh, four. Mm -hmm. So we have 4 of uh, minus 4 that is 0 here and 4 we again have 0 and finally 5 minus 4 that is 1 right now we have minus half outside so that multiplies with all the terms so you have 0 0 minus half now Right. So uh, with this, you see that x is nothing but the matrix here. This is zero zero minus half here, or we get that x is zero, y is zero, and z is minus half. Right. So that solves the equation here. Actually, uh. Somewhere uh, I seem to have calculated it wrongly, and this should not be the actual answer. But however, the method is is the is the exactly the same one is the correct one. So the answer is actually uh, right. So these are not the answers. x is actually, this is the correct answer, x is 1 by 3, y is 0, and z is minus 1 by 3. Right? If, you, if you substitute these, you see that this is the actually solution. Right? Uh, moving to the ninth one, find the value of lambda and mu for which the system uh, where lambda and mu are belong to both the real number set have unique solution and infinitely many solutions. Right. Uh, so here we will try to follow the Kramer's rule. So first of all, delta is which is formed by this equation. So one on one, one, two, three, two, five, lambda. Right. So this is equal to one into two lambda minus fifteen 
माइनस वन इंटू लैमडा माइनस सिक्स प्लस वन इंटू फाइव माइनस फोर दिस इज एक्चुअली टू लैमडा माइनस फिफ्टीन माइनस लैमडा प्लस सिक्स प्लस वन डेल्टा इज इक्वल टू लैमडा सेवन सो लैमडा माइनस एट एट सो दिमेंट एक्चुअली वेरी सिंपल फॉर्म Now, for unique solution, uh, the only condition is that the de determinant should not be zero, right? Uh, we don't have to care about the the <coughs> the, the uh, determinants found by uh, the delta x, delta y, or delta z. The only thing is delta should not be equal to zero. The first one, delta is not equal to zero, hence lambda is not equal to eight, right? Uh, at the same time, mu can mu can take any value, or mu belongs to the real number set. Right? So no restriction on mu. And for the second one, uh, what we require is for infinitely many solutions that the determinant should be zero, right? So we directly have the condition that since determinant is actually zero, at the same time we also require uh, the delta x, delta y, and delta z to be zero. So let us uh, find, let us find them. So for the first one, uh, delta x, right? Six fourteen and mu, and then we have one two five one three lambda, one two five one three lambda, right? Uh, now we know that lambda is equal to eight, so you can just substitute that. So we have six one one fourteen two three mu five eight, and this is equal to. Six into sixteen minus fifteen minus one into fourteen into eight is one and two minus three mu plus one into seventy minus two mu. Right, so this is six minus one and two plus three mu plus seventy minus two mu. Right, so this, this is actually delta x. And at the same time, we could have taken any of the other two. I just taken the uh, The first one, right? so this is equal to three uh, mu minus two mu. That is mu plus seventy six minus one and two. And that is thirty six. Right? Mu minus thirty six. So this is my delta x, and even the delta x needs to be zero, right? So we see that mu is actually equal to thirty six. So for infinitely many solutions, mu is thirty six and lambda is eight. Only in this case, only in this case. We will have infinitely many solutions, right? Uh, Moving to the, na the next one. Uh, let f of x is equal to uh, cos x x one two sin x x square two x tan x x one. Now find limit as uh, limit as x tends to zero of f dash of x by x. So the first thing we need to do here is find the derivative of f of x. Right? So f dash of x actually. So uh, here instead of uh, uh, Instead of differentiating row by row, what we'll do is we we'll differentiate the first column, then the second, and then the third. And it's pretty obvious why we should do that. Okay, so x x squared x one two x one. The next one is. One two x one one two x one. Now, look, if you look at the third one, we have two columns same, and the determinant is directly zero. And this was the main reason why uh, I differentiated it by uh, columns and not by rows. Now we have just two determinants. In which uh, one of the determinants has only uh, one element, the third column, right? The third one, third element, the third uh, determinant. So we can now start uh, We can start directly uh, evaluating it. Moreover, you can directly take uh, uh, x common from the from the first uh, from the second row of the first column, right? First determinant. So you have x into Minus sin x 
2 cos x secant squared x 1 x 1 1 2 x 1 right and similarly the x common from this this one also so cos x 2 sin x tan x 1 x uh, sorry 1 0 2 0 right so we directly have the expression f, f dash of x by x right and this is equal to uh, also we will uh, we'll try to reduce it further by uh, doing r2 r3 as uh, sorry uh, c3 as c3 minus c2 right so I, I also do the operation c3 as c3 minus c2 this is for the first determinant what that makes it is One x one. Uh, this is zero. This is x. This is also zero. This is cos x two sine x. Um, tan x one x one zero two zero. Right. So this is outside. Right. So I just uh, expand this now. This is uh, the x here is minus x, right? So into minus sine x minus secant squared x plus 2 into cos x minus tan x, right? So instead of uh, okay, I'll just write it in this format x into sine x plus secant squared x plus 2 times. Oh, so sorry, this is again minus here also. Minus, right? Uh, because I'm for the for this two here, the cofactor is minus or something. Minus two cos x minus tan x. Right. Now that uh, I have obtained the expression for limit uh, for f dash of x by x, so I'll just take the limit as x tends to zero. That is limit as x tends to zero of x into sin x plus secant squared x minus 2 times cos x minus tan x. Now, if you look at all these uh, individual terms, x as x tends to 0 is 0, sin x turns to 0, secant squared x tends to 1, right, which is a finite number, not an infinite number. And similarly, cos x tends to 1, whereas tan x again tends to 0. So, I can simply substitute the values. So, it's 0 into 0 plus 1 minus 2 times 1 minus 0 right so i see that it's nothing, nothing but minus 2 right so the limit of f dash of x by x as x tends to 0 is just minus 2 right so uh, that concludes the the series on uh, matrices and determinants just keep practicing these questions uh, only then you will be uh, more and more fluent uh, with the with the row operations with the uh, different uh, formula to be used right